Hi all and welcome back. Previously on our channel, we packed our bags and drove south to Goa for a three day trip. Enjoyed the mornings and the evenings on the beaches, tasted some delicious food and partied hard. And soon it was time to get back on the road, headed to the beautiful state of Karnataka. Hi, welcome to our channel When on a Break. I am Sunny and this is my wife Varnika and these are our dogs Jiraya and Ginny. Our dream is to explore the world and see new places, hiking, get up and close to wildlife, try new cuisines and engage with new people when we are on a break from work. Thank you for joining us on our journey. Before exiting the state of Goa, we stopped for brunch at this lovely pet friendly restaurant named Beno at Benolim. They had some nice options on their menu and a good chilled ambience. The staff was so kind to arrange for boiled chicken on a nominal price which was a plus plus. Here's a pro tip. Long drives can get overwhelming but taking short frequent breaks whenever possible are very refreshing for pets, passengers and definitely for the driver. National Highway 66 goes through some very scenic areas. During our road trip we passed through some excellent sites officially making this highway one of our favorites. Driving from Benolim in Goa while Jirai and Jinny took long naps. Flashes of the sea, bridges over creeks and excellent roads kept our spirits high. Soon we were crossing River Kali and entered Karwar. We were now officially in Karnataka. Our stopover stay was on the border of Angola and Gokarna, an hour before the main town of Gokarna. After having a calm drive, getting caught up in mad traffic was exhausting. By the time we reached the accommodation, it was very dark and we were too tired to explore. Some good food and a good bed was all that we wished for and our wish was granted. Red Earth Gokarna was our stay for the next two days. A retreat built on a cliff overlooking the vast expanse of the Arabian Sea on one side and forest and a small village on the other. It has preserved the natural beauty of the original site, like the stream which they let flow through the property into the sea, rather than blocking it or diverting it. Jiraya and Jinny really enjoyed dipping their paws into it and playing in this cold fresh water after their morning walk. There is something about staying near the coast. That feel and sound of the breeze, the beautiful skies changing all day, the waves smashing into the rocks creating this random infinite patterns. There is rhythm and chaos at the same time. Yet it's just so peaceful. And that feeling is out of this world. Hello. After Hello. a refreshing morning walk, it was time for breakfast. I can't remember how many servings we ate that morning. It was really yummy. Red Earth has not disrupted the local ecosystem and still is a safe passage for the local wildlife. I captured a few of them on my camera.
After a post-breakfast nap, Jiraiya was ready to hit the road again. As you can see, he was very excited. There are many places you can explore when you are at Gokarna. One of which is the Yana Caves. And that's where we were headed next. Road trips are full of surprises. You never know what you may come across. Like how Anika spotted a spied hornbill on the tree on the side of the road. Once we diverted off the National Highway 66, the roads got rougher and narrower. But the feel of driving across the forest was magical. The way the light cut through the dense foliage, illuminating the forest floor, and the road made the drive worth it. We started our hike around 1 in the afternoon. The weather was not that bad and there were no leeches in October. In the early days, reaching Yana Caves was really difficult. Pilgrims took days to reach the cave from the coast compared to today where one can drive all the way up to the start of the trek, walk to the temple at the summit and back in three hours with lots of breaks. There was a small river stream parallel to our route. There are no prizes for guessing what happened next. I'm coming, wait. Huh? No. Yeah, I'm coming, coming, coming. After a refreshing break, we were back on our route, not knowing how much further the caves were. But as we began climbing the series of stairs, we saw it. This massive natural structure standing tall, surrounded by dense forest, forcing us to just stare at it as we ascended. To me, it appeared as celestial structures. According to Hindu mythology, a demon named Bhasmasura was granted a boon that anything on which he places his palm would turn to ashes. Bhasmasura then took advantage of this. Not only did he create havoc, but he also decided to test his skill on the very person who granted him this gift, Lord Shiva. Fearing for his life, Lord Shiva escaped to this point on earth and asked Lord Vishnu for help. Lord Vishnu took the shape of a beautiful woman named Mohini and appeared in front of Bhasmasura. The demon tried to win over her, but Mohini challenged him to dance exactly like she did. During the dance, she put her palm on her own head. Bhasmasura imitated her and turned to ashes. We reached the top. The entrance to the main cave, which is Bhairaveshwara cave, is through the Shiva temple at the summit. Pets are not allowed inside religious places, so we skipped exploring this cave. We spent some time taking a few videos and photographs before we began 
to descend back to the start. We were truly happy that we made it to the top. It was completely worth it. <laughs> so much, so much is screaming. So much was screaming. Jenny. Jenny. I'm going to do tired, baby. Come on. Yana Caves are known for its massive rock formations, Bhairaveshwara Hill and Mohini Hill, approximately 90 meters in height. All eyes were on Jiraiya and Jinni. Maybe it's not usual to trek with dogs here. Trying to take a family photo is a mission by itself. Making them sit and face the camera is so difficult, but we got a few clicks. Trek up. I wanted to take a picture with the kids, but both are out, completely tired. Yeah, completely tired. Especially Jenny. Yeah, especially Jenny. Her small, small legs. She went all the way up, all the way down. But yeah, enjoyed it. <laughs> Just taking. Completely worked. Yeah, completely worked. 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 You couldn't go in the temple. That, that's fine. Red Earth has a direct connect to a beautiful secluded beach known as Honey Beach. After saying goodbye to the wonderful Yana Caves, we plan to drive back to Red Earth and enjoy the sunset at this beach. A short hike down the cliff provides the spectacular panoramic views of the beach and the surrounding cliffs. The weather was nice and breezy and the beach was clean and empty. The perfect time to unleash our beast. Ready? Ready? Come on.
<laughs> it was a treat watching Jiraiya and Ginny having so much fun running around this beautiful beach at sundown. The sky was very dramatic, or romantic, and its reflection on the waves was just magical. Bye. It was a perfect way to end our last evening at Gokarna. Such big rocks and waves are clashing on us. If we were not travelling slow or would have left Goa earlier, we would have had more time to visit Gokarna's town and its famous beaches and cafes. But we decided not to. We'll do it the next time. Instead, on a day of checkout, we went for a long morning walk on the winding village roads, walking up to the cliff edge overlooking Honey Beach and captured some good shots of a few birds. The hibiscus flowers within the property was attracting so many beautiful butterflies, especially this black and yellow birdwing, and it was so pleasing to watch them as we feasted on some freshly made breakfast. Well, it was time to pack our bags and check out from this beautiful property. A special thank you to the owners and the staff here at Red Earth who were very accommodative and helpful. And just like that, we ended this fun and adventurous trip to Gokarna and headed to our next destination, Udipi. Thanks for watching.